Namo Namaha. Hello, everyone. This is Simon. And uh, this is a, uh, a bit of a, a break uh, for me uh, between uh, making videos on the chapters on Parashara. Um, I had this idea to go back and uh, look at the nakshatras and look at some of the herbs that are ideal for each nakshatra. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going through some health stuff and I found that the herbs that fit my uh, ascendant nakshatra and moon nakshatra are actually very helpful. Uh, and hopefully they'll be helpful to you. So that's why I'm making this. Um, so, but uh, the goal here is not to, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna move through some slides here really quick. It's gonna, uh, there we go is not to uh, just give you a bunch of random information. Uh, the thing I find most frustrating with being on YouTube and uh, looking at stuff, it, it's all random. There is no sequence. Uh, there is no, and even if there is a sequence, there is no uh, assuredness that you have the vehicle, the, the, uh, the vessel to put the information in and have it stick. And so what usually happens is information comes in and it, then it leaves. It's not yours truly. And what I'm going to try to do in my upcoming courses and in the courses I've done is to create a sort of systematic method where you can really not only get information, there's so much information out there, everyone's got something, but build your vessel, to build your vessel so that you can actually hold the information. And um, if you're interested in my classes, uh, I've, uh, I, I still have to do my website, but I've got uh, my Spring into Jyotisha retreat happening now where we talk about uh, planetary combinations, which in a, in a completely different way, no one's ever covered them like this. The books don't talk about it. Um, you know, the courses out there, there are very few that cover the very psychological aspects. What does it mean to have Moon, Mars opposite? What does it mean to have, you know, Venus with Saturn? Uh, in terms of your life experience, like how does that play out? And um, so we're doing that. We're talking about the fixed stars. We're talking about um, the outer planets and a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So if you want to join that course, just emailed me, simon at spirittype.com. If you're watching this after the course is done, uh, you, you can get a copy of it. Uh, everything is recorded. It's a uh, probably going to be a 12-week course or more. Uh, so far, we're just on week three, so it's a long way to go. Uh, anyway, so my point in saying this is what I'm going to present today is kind of way out of, way out of left field. This, there's no really form or structure to this. So I apologize in advance. I don't like to teach like this. But it is something that just kind of came to me. So those of you who are into Ayurveda or healing and herbs, and those of you who are also at the same time interested in astrology may find this useful. So I just thought I'd share it. Okay. And uh, yeah, so here we go. So th these are some herbs, uh, some herbs, some uh, uh, verses from uh, Charaka Samhita that uh, talk about Vayupitam Kapaschoktaha Shariro Dosha Sangraha Manasak Punaruhishto Rajas Chattamevacha. This is Vata Pitta and Kapha are the doshas of the body, Rajas and Sattva are the doshas, uh, sorry, Rajas and Tamas are the doshas of the mind. Why do we start with this? Because to know which herb to pick, you have to know. Where, where is the problem? Is it in your mind? Is it a mental, emotional issue like depression? Or is it a, a more of a physical thing like you have inflammation in your knee, right? I mean, I know depression has a physical component and probably inflammation in your knee. I don't know. It may have an emotional component. Maybe you get mad and you just knee the wall or knee people. <laughs> so, um, but primarily one leans towards you know, emotional, the other leans towards physical. So we have to know that first. Now, I'm going to jam down here through a bunch of uh, slides. Isn't this amazing? This is from our classes, by the way, guys. These are some illustrations uh, um, that uh, we sort of use to illustrate the beginning courses that we have. 
And this we're going to be using for the fixed stars is really cool. If your planet was close to, let's say, this beautiful star. Do you guys know what this is? This is Regulus. This is Magha Nakshatra, the heart of the lion. And in a minute, I'm going to be telling you which herbs are good for this. But some of the herbs will be for the heart, right? Because it represents the heart of the thing, the center, the essence. Um, and, you know, Castor and Pollux here. So we have, uh, this is Punar Vasu. And one of the great herbs for that is Punar Nava. Uh, the herbs will often mirror the name of the nakshatra. But uh, anyway, so let's, <laughs> let's get to it here. These are some more cool illustrations. Uh, variations of the natal chart. I'm just going through this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Kind of cool. Look at this. This is daytime course of the planets. This is the nighttime course of the planets. So again, uh, if you'd like to have kind of a systematic training in Jyotisha, um, I invite you to come join, uh, join us. Email me and, uh, you know, we can go through uh, a complete training here because ultimately with, without building the vessel, none of this can stick. Uh, so, okay, I'm, I'm just kind of going through these slides. I hope you bear with me till we get to the slide that I want to talk about today. Maraka houses, four aims of life, artha, kama, dharma, moksha. Why didn't we start with dharma? Because the first thing you need when you're born is milk, artha, sustenance. Then comes dharma. But um, according to some, uh, uh, according to others, dharma comes first. Your very existence is dharma, which then needs to be nourished. Anyway, I'm just kind of going off on a tangent. I hope you guys are following here. And then you have, these are the artha houses. Isn't this beautiful? Um, I didn't make this, by the way. Uh, Nadia made this. This is uh, a beautiful illustration of the types of houses. And if you guys want this uh, slideshow, I suppose you could bribe bribe us. But um, anyway, probably you should come to the class because the slideshow without the class is not anything useful. Uh, natural benefics, malefics, and then Surya. Om Surya, Om Markaya, all the mantras for Surya, then Chandra, Om Chandra Mase, Namunamaha, then Om Kujayan Maha, Mangalayan Maha, Green Kong Kujayan Maha, and so forth. Buddhayan Maha, Mind Boom Buddhayan Maha, and oh, cannot overlook Shani. Oh no, this is Buddha. Guru Om uh, Gurave Maha, Om Braspataye Maha, then Om Green Shum Shukra Maha. Then Shani Om Sham Shani Sharaya Namaha Hariyum. And see, each, each Graha, even though sh Shani is a mainly tamasic planet, it has sattvic qualities. As Parashara tells us, every planet has, um, every planet is, has a Paramatma quality, meaning a higher soul. So, even though Shani represents tamas, things, you know, tamas equalities like dirtiness and, and harshness and so on, it is him, he himself is like all the grahas are above. They're above this material world and they do not partake in it. And hence, they are not bound to the lower modes of existence like we are. Uh, so even though Shani is the lord of this tamas quality, He's tamasic, not tamasic, tamasic. Uh, nonetheless, he himself is beyond those gunas, uh, mostly, for the most part. Rahu Ketu, Om Rahu Ketu, Rahu Rahu Venamaha, Om Ketu Venamaha, Om Rahu Ketu Vyamnamaha. Here we go. And... Planetary strength, here is exaltation, weakness, rulership, ownership, debilitation. <laughs> um, bright moon, dark moon. What is it to be a bright moon or a dark moon? 
and aspects, the drishtis of the planets, Mars. This is one thing we talk, if this seems like a really long advertisement for my classes, I didn't mean it to be, but I'm, as, as I'm going through these slides, it, it's kind of reminding me. Um, what does it mean to have the one-sided aspect, say, of Mars? If your moon is here and Mars aspects with the eight, it's very different from Mars aspecting directly. It's also different from Mars's fourth aspect. We just covered this in our uh, Spring into Jyotish retreat. The eighth aspect has an element of scandal, has an element of, of compulsiveness. So if your moon is here, and this is a, a, specifically with the moon-Mars connection, then you're going to be driven, you're going to have waves of lust or, or the desire to do something foolhardy just come over you. And you almost feel like you can't help it. And there are a number of people who have this. Uh, Bill Clinton has it. George Bush has it. I guess even Hillary has it. So I guess if you want to be president, you got to have this, <laughs> this sort of compulsive quality. Uh, but there are others who are not, you know, presidential, uh, who also have it. Now, whereas the Mars Moon opposition, like Princess Diana and and uh, and a number of other people. Um, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, Bill Gates uh, leads to something completely different. It means in the first half of your life, you have a passion, a hobby for something that becomes your career. And in the second half, that you have a very different hobby that be also becomes your career, something you're known for. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the details of it, uh, but we, we, we spent a whole two hours on this one asp on this one permutation of Mars in the class. It's very profound and, and it really opens up a person's psychology. Same thing with Saturn. Uh, it's one-sided aspect on Venus, Moon, or, or, or the Sun versus its seventh or its tenth. There's a different quality to those aspects. Uh, Karta Yoga, body of uh, Kala Purusha. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So in fact, I'm going to start here. So now, what are we at, like 20 minutes already? This is the real beginning of this video. So when making a herbal formula, um, consider these guidelines. Uh, this is the way I was trained. Uh, there are many different ways to make a herbal formula, but uh, one of the ways I was trained was the first thing you want to consider is the dosha. Uh, what dosha is out of whack and what doshas do you, do you want to support? So if pitta is the problem, the person has fever, let's say, then you want to put the most herb. Five indicates the a quantity of, of the herb you want to put. Okay? So five mean, doesn't mean five different herbs. It means the, relevant, the relative uh, proportion. So there's going to be the least amount of basma, the most amount of the dosha-specific herb. For example, if you have a vata imbalance, consider ashwagandha, consider, um, you know, a dashamula, consider any number of vata-reducing herbs. If you have a pitta imbalance, consider shatavari, consider guduchi. Uh, and by the way, these herbs are all Ayurvedic. I'm, I, this is my background, Ayurveda. So I'm not talking about Western herbs. I know, I know very little about them. Uh, Native American herbs, I know very little. So this is... But this can be transferred if you are familiar with both terms. You can translate, just like if you know Spanish and uh, Indonesian. You can translate those two traditions. So, um, anyhow, um, so the dosha gets the first thing. So, and if you're kapha, you know, you want a kapha balancing herb. Uh, like if kapha is the problem. So, something like pundarnava, chitraka, uh, uh, kutki or, uh, or and, and gugulu and so on. Uh, although you probably don't want a gugulu that's the main thing. Gugulu is pretty intense. So punanava, something like that. Then datu. Datu means the, uh, the system in the body. So there's the musculoskeletal system, the circulatory system, the reproductive system. Uh, there's the, the endocrine system, the digestive system. You get it? The datu is... Um, uh, that is affected that will get a certain amount and then the organ o organ or the actual disease so let's say you're having foggy brain or, or your brain is burnt out so you want to have brahmi you want to have herbs that specifically address the organ 
And how is the brain? Is it being burnt out too much pitta? Then you want to have a, a pitta balancing herb. And the dhatu will be majja dhatu. Majja is the nervous system and the, uh, uh, roughly speaking, the nervous system. So you want to have a herb for the dhatu, a herb for the dosha, and then a herb for the specific organ. Okay. Then how is the person's agni? What kind of agni do they have? Is it tikshna? Is it mishra? Is it uh, manda? Is it sama? Is it sama? Does it have ama? Is it a lot of ama? So you have to consider how is their digestion? So you want to add something for that. And then the nakshatra, what we're going to talk about here today. Uh, and finally, a basma, a, uh, something to potentiate the formula, something like a gugulu or a, you know, um, Shanka Basma or, or Panchamrita or anyway, if, if the things I'm saying, if all these words sound weird, then don't worry about it because that's not the topic for today. The topic actually is uh, what are the herbs for the nakshatras? But I just thought I'd go over some of the principles of making a formula. Now, again, you don't have to follow these. These are just guidelines, guidelines for making a formula. The second thing you can consider is what body parts does each nakshatra rule? Uh, and then there's, you know, there are lovely lists like the one we just had, which are way over too much detail. Basically, Kritika is the head, Rohini is the forehead, Mriga is the eyes, Ardra is also uh, eyebrows, Ardra is the eyes. Uh, Punarvasu has to do with the fingers and the nose, Pushya is the breasts, uh, and, and, and etc. Okay. Magga is also the nose and the chin. Um, Pura Falguni is a sex organ. So we'll cover this as I go through the, through the list. Okay, so um, then Prakriti assessment. Now you can look at the chart and see, the, well, the next step is to look at the chart. And here is my, here's the way I'm going to do it. You can ignore this for now. This is for a, a complete Prakriti assess, assessment. The thing we're going to look at is... Um, is the following. Number one, in fact, let's see, I'm going to have to write this in here. So let me exit from here. Um, <clears throat> number one, assess Lagna Nakshatra. Start with that. So your Lagna Nakshatra is the most important. That means that if you're not sick, you don't have to take the herb associated with your lagna. But if you ever feel like you're getting out of balance, just start taking that herb. It'll help to bring you back to your natal self, to your, to your balanced state. Um, then secondly, also consider, well, I'll just make this number four. Also consider your moon nakshatra. These are, folks, these two, that's all you need. These are the most important ones. You can get fancy and start adding planets, the sun, Saturn. Let's say your Saturn's debilitated and you're running a Saturn period. Well, maybe you're going to want to strengthen the nakshatra that Saturn sits in, the vessel. Remember I talk, just talked about this. The vessel that something sits in is more important than what you put in it because no matter how good the stuff you put in if the vessel can't take it there's no point so by taking these nakshatra herbs you help to build that vessel okay so these are the two things and so i guess number five consider let's see finally consider any afflicted planet nakshatra this would be the final consideration, okay? So having these things in mind, let's then start with the presentation. Oops, no, let's not do that. I don't know, I'm not sure. Present, I meant to hit present. All righty. All right, so, um, so here we go. The first nakshatra is Ashwini. And of course, there's going to be, uh, Ashwini sounds like Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha has to do with horses. Ashwini has to do with horses. Bada bing, bada boom. And you've got your herb. So if you're an Ashwini, Lagna, or Moon 
if your moon or ascendant is in Ashwini, consider Ashwagandha as your baseline herb, the thing that will bring you back into balance. If you're Bharani, then, now Bharani is very interesting. One of the meanings, one of the secrets of Bharani is that Bharani people tend to have very lush eyebrows, hair, and nails. These are the upadhatu of asti. Uh, they are the sub-dosha, the sub-dhatu of the bone. Uh, anyway, that, that doesn't matter. So the things that nourish the hair are bringraj, this very special herb. It cleans the liver oops, and nourishes the hair. Bringraj, very important herb in Ayurveda. And also, and, and of course, bringraj oil is very popular. And amla, amla or amalaki is the, the little sour fruit that also nourishes the hair and the, the inner skin. Tamarind also, and palasha pushpa. Uh, Mm, which is a flower. Palasha has an uh, association with Ketu also. So if you happen to have Ketu in Bharani Nakshatra, there's a double death uh, kind of indication because Bharani's ruler is Yama. Palasha is associated with Ketu. I mean, uh, Ketu is associated with, you know, demise. So having the Palasha fruit, Palasha Pushpa in your house may be a good idea. Anyway, if you don't know what it is, then then don't experiment. But if you know what these are, these are the, the safer bets here, okay? Kritika, bilva. Bilva is wonderful. It's a wonderful herb fruit um, that balances the inner, uh, the inner lining of your gut. So kritika has to do with agni, and it tends to make you too, too, your appetite is very up and down. You get ravenous. Bilva is excellent to keep you balanced if you're a kritika person. Then Rohini, Neem, Neem and Jambu, uh, which is a fruit, but Neem mainly. Rohini and Mriga both share Neem. Mriga also has Ashoka and Kardira for the eyes. So eye drops for, for, uh, for Mriga. Taking care of your eyes is important. Uh, then Ardra, well, Ardraka. Ardraka is ginger. So it sounds just like Ardha. Ginger is excellent to keep Ardha people balanced. So if your moon or lagna is in Ardha, beetle juice, or very close to the star, beetle juice, think, uh, uh, consider that. Red sandalwood is good to keep in the home. It's not something you want to ingest, uh, but it's, it, it's, you can you know, have it. Krishnagaru is something else too. Then, um, but the main thing is ginger. Then Punarvasu. Punarvasu, Punarnava, Punarnava, Punarvasu. You get it? The, it it's, uh, you know, it's the reason why walnuts are good for the brain. They look like brains, right? When you crack open a walnut, what does it look like inside? It's a brain. Well, yes, it has iodine. It's got, you know, good fats. It's got all the stuff that your brain, I don't know if your brain needs iodine, but walnuts have it. Uh, but it's got nutrients that feed your brain. And by God, it works. When I'm starving or working too much, I eat a few walnuts and my brain feels uh, rejuvenated. It's probably totally a uh, placebo effect, but you never know. Anyway, so punarvasu, punarnava, punarnava, punarvasu. Punarnava is a herb that cleanses the um, kidneys, urinary tract, and prostate. It's, uh, it, it, it relieves kapha from the body. Bamboo is also good. So you should be eating bamboo. Probably if you're a Punarvasu person, Punarvasu people love to recycle. So having a bamboo straw, having bamboo kitchenware and stuff like that is awesome. Have bamboo in your house if you have Punarvasu. Okay? Then Pushya. Pushya is the Ashwata tree. Ashwata tree is Pipali. So Pipali for Pushya. Um, also, pushya has to do with the breasts and breast milk. So fenugreek, I didn't put this down, but fenugreek, which helps to stimulate uh, breast milk, is good. Um, this is good for pushya. Then ashlesha. Ashlesha is the serpent nakshatra, and saffron is said to be a cure for poison. And so putting saffron in your milk and having it every day is very good. Nagchampa is the... Uh, uh, the incense that you want to burn. Again, it's associated with the Naga. Nagchampa is its name. Um, Nagchampa flower. 
okay? But you burn that in honor of Ashlesha. Eating mangoes, very good for Ashlesha as well. All right? So far, so good? Cool? You have questions? Mm, don't ask me because this is not live. Although, you know, my teacher, uh, Dr. Ladd in this, uh, you know, some of the great teachers are, are, are very interesting where even when they make a recording, they'll just say things, they'll look in a certain part of the room and say something like, when a person is pregnant, they should never take neem. And then they'll turn and just keep recording. And I swear to you, like five years later, someone will watch that and they're in that part of the room, they're pregnant and they were taking neem and they saw Dr. Lot turn to them and they went, oh my God, <laughs> he's talking to me. So anyway, hopefully some of what I've said uh, is resonating. So let's keep going here. Um, and by the way, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of this list is, I'm indebted to Dr. Lot for. So Dr. Vasant Lot at the Ayurvedic Institute. So here we go. Maga, Maga Nakshatra. If your moon or ascendant is there, then Manjishta is good. Ashoka. Manjishta is a great herb for detoxing the blood and for, for uh, healing the bones. Uh, but there can be bleeding associated with this nakshatra. So Manjishta is good. Ashoka is good for menstruation. Women who have menstrual issues. This is one of the best herbs. Banyan also. And because Maga is the heart, it is the heart of the lion. Arjuna, which is the heart. Arjuna is the best heart herb. It is a bark of a tree that has naturally high levels of CoQ10, which of course you could buy at your local health food store. But Arjuna and Arjuna Arishta. Arishta is the wine made from the Arjuna bark. Mmm, yummy. Is naturally high in CoQ10 as well as a whole bu bunch of other goodies. Purva Palguni. Well, Purva and Uttara are associated with the reproductive organs. So you're going to want things that help your reproductive system, like ashwagandha, like shatavari, like bala, or bala is actually the, the name of the herb. Um, but for Purva Falguni specifically, Dr. Lod recommends Vidanga. Vidanga is a uh, worm killer, and it's great for uh, uh, restoring the uh, microbiome by reducing the number of bad bacteria, candida, and other kind of, uh, you know, invaders. Palasha, there's that uh, Palasha Pushpa, the her, uh, it's a leaf. I don't think you really ingest this. It's more uh, decorative to have in the house. Then Uttra Palguni, mango, papaya, uh, things that contain natural ephedra. This, I'm going to say no, forget about it, but it's on the list. And then Bala. Bala should have a long A there. Uh, so those are herbs for Uttara Palguni, but then, you know, also uh, consider uh, Vajikarana herbs. Vajikarana are things that build. Uh, actually, you know what? The Palgunis usually have too much sex drive, so never mind that. Uh, just eat your mango and be happy. Okay, so Hasta, Hasta Nakshatra, Bibitaki is excellent. So if you know Trifala, Trifala is made from three things. Trifala is perhaps the most famous formula in Ayurveda. It's made from Amalaki, not Amalaki, it's Amalaki. Oh, I know you hate it when I do that. Amalaki, then Bibitaki, and then Haritaki. Bibitaki, uh, Haritaki. Haritaki. Okay, so Amalaki is good for Pitta, Haritaki is good for Vata, and Bibitaki uh, clears Kapha from the system. And nutmeg, so having your nutmeg with milk or just put nutmeg in your coffee if you're a Hasta person. Personally, I'm not a big fan of nutmeg. Um, then Chitra Nakshatra, again Bilva. Interesting, the soft Nakshatra. Uh, Kritika is a sharp and soft nakshatra. Chitra is a soft nakshatra. Bilva is good. Also, Kutaja, Chitraka. Chitraka, like Chitra, Chitra, Chitraka, Chitraka, Chitra. Punarvasu, Punarnava, Punarnava, Punarvasu. Then we're going to have Mula, Dasha, Mula, Dasha, Mula, Mula. Chitraka. Chitrak is a great digestive herb. It clears. It's awesome. You take a little Chitrak, 30 minutes later, you're ready to eat your, your 
your dog, your pet, whatever it is. People start looking at you funny because you start getting really hungry. Uh, but that's a good sign. Appetite is good. And also sandalwood. Um, you know, using sandalwood perfume or things like that. Oil. You don't want to eat sandalwood. Then Svati. Svati is an akshatra of by, blessed by Sarasvati. So there is a formula called Sarasvati Churna. And it's a mixture of about 20 or 30 different herbs. It's great for Svati Sarasvati. Svati Sarasvati. Arjuna also, the herb for the heart and sandalwood again. Then Vishaka, saffron. Now, why saffron? Because Vishaka is part of this, uh, this well, Scorpio part that is uh, uh, via combusta, I believe it's called. It's, it's the part of the sky that's spoiled by, by the scorpion, the sting of the scorpion that has poison associated with it. And so saffron is the antidote to that. And so jasmine, saffron, and agni mantha is a special Ayurvedic herb. Anuradha, again saffron. Why? Folks, because these are sarpa drekanas. Mind you, uh, ashlesha is sarpa drekana, associated with snakes. And so again, saffron is the antidote. Naga kesar, again, it's a, a naga here. In kesar, it's a, it's a type of a nut. Uh, and if you don't know what it is, please don't experiment with this. Talk to an Ayurvedic physician. But saffron is easy. Just put some in your milk, you know, and drink it every day. Jishta. <laughs> this is a funny one. Nirgundi is one of the herbs that, where you treat syphilis or, you know, venereal diseases. And why Jishta? Well, if you know the, the story of it, Indra, the deity, is famous for getting himself in trouble by sleeping with people he shouldn't be sleeping with and getting all kinds of venereal diseases. So it's cute, Nirgundi. And now this is uh, controversial because this is a uh, now a, I believe, it's not a banned substance, but it's uh, Shringabhasma. It's uh, deer horn. And uh, it's very beneficial. It has great Ayurvedic uses, but because it's scarce, and people are often killing the animal. Um, it, it's hard to get. And but anyway, if this is your nakshatra, it's something. If you have connections, and if you don't mind that it comes from an animal, then it's something to consider. Shringabhasma is also really good for the heart. Uh, people have had heart attacks, and so on. Anyway, this is not in any way intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. Just entertainment, folks. Just entertainment. Just talking here. Astrology, right? Just astrology. Um, okay, then the let's go to part three. Mula. Mula dasha mula dasha mula mula. So mula dasha mula. Dasha mula is ten herbs that include uh God, they include Gokshura, they include uh the hell is in, in I I used to know this by heart. Um Anyway, I'm too lazy to, to look it up. But it, it's, they're all mainly herbs for, for calming vata. And also shatavari, which is also a root. Folks, all shatavari is is asparagus root. So anything that is a root plant or a plant root is good for mula. Get it? Eat a lot of asparagus. Eat roots and tubers. If you live in Puerto Rico... You have nyame, you know, if you live in Hawaii, you've got um, taro, um, you've got yucca, all these awesome, incredible root tuber kind of plants. I suppose you could put ginger in that because ginger is kind of like that. So things from under the earth, very good. Uh, okay, then purvashada, again vidanga. Calamus root. A calamus is smoked in Ayurveda. It's sniffed. So you take a little bit and you sniff, or you do a, yeah, a snuff. Turmeric. Turmeric can also be burnt and inhaled. Oh, Ayurveda is so awesome, guys. Um, if you're interested in studying, go to the Ayurvedic Institute. It's it's the place to get all this really cool info that ties in not just Ayurveda but Jyotisha, Tantra. 
you know, Sanskrit, uh, Vastu Shastra, all of the allied sciences, none of these things work in isolation, folks. Everything is tied together. And, uh, you know, one day studying with my teacher, we study Bhagavad Gita. The next day we're studying, uh, you know, um, something tantric. And the third day we're watching old Hindi movies. And, and, and it's all part of understanding and kind of getting into uh, the culture and, and how pe different ways people suffer and how we can alleviate that. Uttarashada, also turmeric, also vidanga, so pretty much the same. Abhijit nakshatra, amalaki, shravana, arjuna, rye and barley for shravana nakshatra. Then danishta, danya, danishta. Coriander, one of its names is uh, danya or danya. Danya, danya, that's one of those. So it's it sounds like danishta, doesn't it? And then also dashamula. Uh, as a secondary thing. Then Shatta Bishak, Lotus. Lotus and Bell are good. Then Purva Bhadra, Brahmi for the brain to keep you cool. Brahmi is also cooling and good for circulation. Uh, these are second, way secondary. They're hardly, at least in the Ayurveda, the way I learned it. Bell, Arka, we never use these. But Brahmi is a main herb. Neem is a main herb for Uttara Bhadra. Again, cleansing to the liver and clears heat from the system. Purva and Uttara Bhadra are very hot. And then, uh, and so neem is excellent for clearing heat from the GI tract and the liver. Brahmi is very good for clearing heat from the head and the nervous system. So different places where the heat will accumulate. Uh, and then finally, Revati, you want Saraswati Churna, as we talked about before with Swati. It is a mix of 20, 30 herbs. And then licorice. Licorice. Yes, Timadu. Okay, I hope this was useful to you guys. And um, again, the way I do this is if I'm feeling out of balance, I will look at the herb from my ascendant. I'll look at the herb from my moon. Take one of them or maybe mix two of them. And if I know what I'm doing, which I often don't, but I like to experiment anyway, I'll mix in some herbs for the dosha, datu, or whatever, and, and go from there. If you don't know where to get your herbs, I do recommend Banyan Botanicals. They're excellent. They grow their herbs in the U.S. sustainably, and, and the ones they grow in India are all organic and sustainable. I also recommend uh, Dr. John Duyard's Life Spa. Excellent, and they care about the herbs and the products they make. Um, I'm sure there are others out there whom I I, I I I just don't use. I just use these two guys, and I love them both because they both dedicated their lives to this, and their stuff is good and clean, and it works. So uh, you can find both of them online. If you're in India, then you've got a lifeline. You've got probably a thousand places you can go. So this is for people more in the West and in the United States, Banyan and Life Spa. But if you're in India, you probably have other options. All right, that's enough out of me. Hope you guys like this and uh, shoot me a, a comment. Uh, these days I'm answering comments. Used to be I never looked at or answered comments, but I'm getting more personable now. I'm a little less grouchy than before. So ha, we'll see about that. All right, everyone, take care. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.